Hi friends, I'm so glad to be able to share this Eastertide formation with you as we explore rule of life, living life with intention together. Um, rule of life is a wonderful gift. It invites us to consider um, anchors and routine and rhythms in our lives that call us to our very best selves. And this is especially important, it seems, during this time of quarantine where many of our rhythms have been upended. Many of our routines are kind of out the window. And I will tell you that today I ate peanut M&Ms and double stuffed Oreos for lunch. Uh, that is not a rhythm that needs to be repeated. That is not something that I should be doing on the regular. And rule of life invites us to turn away from that terrible routine of double stuffed Oreos and peanut M&Ms and turn back to a life that calls us to our very best selves and to what God is inviting us to live into, to what we're created to be. And if we don't live a life with intention, people will be very glad to put their intentions on us. Um, if we don't live our lives in a way that we're actively discerning what God is calling us to, people who love us, people who want something from us, people are glad to tell us what they think we should be doing. And when I was thinking about this, I had a couple of examples that came to mind. One of them was um, when I left my doctoral program to go to seminary. So when I first started to discern my call and was contemplating seminary, you can imagine that people who love me very much were really freaked out about the idea of me leaving a doctoral program that I had invested several years in. And there was a lot of sacrifice that had gone into it. And I had done a lot of work. And they were like, seminary is great and all, but can you wait a couple years and finish your doctoral program? Because this seems kind of crazy to just leave. And it felt like good advice. It felt right. It, I had sacrificed a lot and I had done a lot of work. So I tried, though my prayer life was calling me in one direction, I tried to honor the good advice that they were giving. But the truth was that that good advice wasn't good for me. That was not my call. So the invitation to complete my doctoral program was a lovely and good invitation, and it was utterly not for me. It was utterly the wrong fit. And trying to force myself into that box um, just delayed the experience of living into my call, into ordained ministry. Um, so you can imagine that that was difficult, but active discernment was really helpful in helping me articulate why leaving that space that was not a life-giving space and turning my energy to a life-giving space was so important. Another example that came to me was many years ago now, my husband, who is awesome and terrific in so many ways, he was working at an organization as a supervisor and he was doing a great job and he loved the group that he was working with and he loved his boss and he was just killing it. And he got the attention of the higher ups at the corporate office and he was promoted. He was offered a promotion to the corporate office. And there is nothing in the world that tells you to say no to a big promotion. Moving to the corporate office sounds awesome. And he was not actively discerning whether it was the right call for him. He was actively dis he actively wanted the promotion. So he went, worked for the corporate office, and it was a disaster. It was just a terrible fit for him. It was an incredibly toxic work environment. And it was really um, just awful. It was an awful change. There is nothing. The whole world is like, yeah, promotion. Woo! But if we had been actively and intentionally discerning, we may have realized that that move would not have been the right move for him. So instead of intentionally discerning what he was being called to, he was discerning what the world was telling him was a great idea and a great fit. And we learned from that, that we have to be active 
in our own discernment and in expressing our own intentions. Otherwise, people will be very glad to express intentions for you. So a rule of life is an invitation to live into the fullness of who God is calling you to be. Charles LaFond wrote a book called Note to Self, Creating Your Guide to a More Spiritual Life. And you don't have to purchase that book, but if you would like to, you're welcome to. It's the book that I've worked through in preparing this. Charles LaFond has a very gentle way of expressing the rule of life as a celebration of life, not something to punish you, not something to stunt your growth, but an invitation to remember who you are and who you're called to be. Now, the first time I ever encountered rule of life was in seminary, and I'm really sorry um, that I encountered it in this way that was really not healthy. I was not ready to receive the wisdom of a rule of life. The first year in seminary, our housing, like my entire cohort, my entire class, had a really stressful experience. Housing wasn't ready. The curriculum was being upended. It was very anxiety producing. And I think that the faculty saw that and wanted to invite us into a process of helping us to discern and describe some anchors for us, some things that we could hold on to in the midst of things that were changing rapidly. And instead, because of my own anxiety, the way that I received it was, you guys are a mess and you need some help and here's a prescription to make that feel better. Like, and because of my own anxiety, I responded with, you can't tell me what to do. I am not going to do this. You are not going to prescribe for me what is going to make me feel better. And it was a terribly unhealthy way of encountering it. It was not the intention of the faculty, I'm quite sure. And it was um, just a shame, a real shame, that that was my first introduction to rule of life. Rule of life is not prescriptive. It's not going to tell you that you're bad. It's not going to tell you that um, it doesn't focus on the ought nots. Charles LaFond has a lovely, lovely quote here. Let your rule of life celebrate life, not scold it. The rule of life is not a list of don'ts. The rule is a channeling of joy as much as it is a reminder of care. The rule is invitatory inviting you to remember your longings. So it's not about trying to force you into a box. Rather, it's an invitation to sit with intention for 30 minutes every day and consider different areas of our lives that it would be helpful for you to remind yourself what you are called to be. So it's not a punishment. It's not going to tell you that you're not good enough, but it is direct. And so, for example, my rule of life would certainly include something that would remind me that eating peanut M&Ms and double stuffed Oreos is actually not a sustainable diet and does not make me feel good in the long run. And it would be direct in that, but not punishing in that. So the rule of life is not going to skip the hard parts. It's going to be direct in addressing the hard parts of our lives, of your life. And it's also going to be gentle and inviting you into a better life, inviting you into better choices. So some of those things, as you can imagine, are going to be tricky to write. It's going to be difficult sometimes to consider some of these topics. And if it gets difficult for you, Um, I am available for one-on-one conversations so that we can work through things together. And Amy Bryan, who is preparing for the diaconate and will be ordained at some point this year, um, she is also familiar with spiritual guidance and direction and would also be glad to have conversations with you as we go through these topics. So The idea with rule of life is not to make things hard for you, but rather to invite you to live into the fullness of who you are created to be. And over the next several videos, we're going to go over some big topics and big themes and little topics underneath them. So there will be six. 
The first will be listening, then being. Vulnerability, body, thought, and existence. And at this point, I would like to invite you to start the practice of taking time every day, set aside, to sit down and contemplate prayerfully the life that you may be called to lead, and to think about those things that are anchors for you that are really important. And I'll give you an example for myself. Um, Charles LaFond in his book actually makes some great suggestions. One of them that he didn't suggest that has been important for me is uh, gratitude. So gratitude is an important anchor. It's an important orientation for me. And when I forget to be grateful or when I forget to orient towards gratitude, I can get off track very quickly. But gratitude reminds me that I am made by a loving God and that that loving God has called me to share love with others and that everything is gift. And that orientation or reorientation has been very important for me in my own practice. So you'll be invited to consider some things that might be important for you in your own. And I look forward to walking this path with you and to sharing this journey. God bless you all. And I look forward to connecting in our next video. We will be talking about the broad heading of listening. Um, such a tricky thing to do in our world that's full of noise, but so important. And I look forward to discussing that with you more. See you soon. Bye.